Hey, Pete Holman here reporting for PT on the net. You know, in the last 10 years, indoor rowing has really resurfaced as a great modality to burn calories, improve health and fitness, and enhance overall athletic performance. However, there's not a lot of education out there on how to properly set up and use the indoor rower. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through proper setup and use of the indoor rower, and I'm going to show you the four phases of the indoor rowing stroke that's going to help maximize performance and durability in your clients. Let's get started. Let's first take a look at the damper setting, which can be found on the right-hand side of the flywheel. This can be adjusted from 10 down to 1. 1 allows the least amount of wind resistance into the flywheel, and 10 allows the most. Now keep in mind, this doesn't dictate intensity. Intensity is dictated by the effort of every stroke that you pull. The harder you pull, the greater the intensity, the harder the workout. However, with this being said, if you're pulling at the same intensity and you have the flywheel on 10, you're going to create a lot more power through each stroke, but you're also going to produce a lot more lactic acid. Concept 2 recommends setting the damper somewhere between 3 and 5 for first-time rowers. Let's now take a look at the flex foot adjustment, which is important depending on your foot size. Simply loosen the base plate on the vertical pegs and adjust the flex foot such that the anchor straps hit you right over the ball of your foot. To remove your feet from the flex foot, simply loosen the nylon straps, kick your feet forward, and that frees your heels from the heel cup. Let's now take a look at the personal monitor. Now this is very important to understand how to operate the monitor because it's going to give you all your quantitative feedback. If you want to just start rowing, simply hit Just Row. This is a standard manual operation. Now you can change the screen, change the units to show watts, calories per hour, calories burned, and 500 meters split times, which is really your gold standard. You can also change the display to give you some different options, whether it's pace boat or watts, meters, or again, the gold standard is this screen that really shows you the most information about your split times. You can also select a workout from the standard list. There's 2,000 meter rows, there's 500 meter rows. If you want to select the 2,000, simply toggle on the 2,000 and you're ready to rock. You can also, during the select workout mode, you can create a new workout, whether it's a single distance, a single time, or an interval workout. This is a great feature to create your own workout. If you hit more options, there's a function that gives you memory, and this will give you the quantitative feedback of every row that you've performed, including split times. This is a really neat option. Okay, let's get into the four phases of the rowing stroke, and the first phase is called the drive phase. This is really where your power comes from. It starts with an aggressive push away from the flywheel with your feet, and the arms are locked in a straight position trying to transfer that energy from low to high it's not dissimilar to a deadlift right most of the motion comes from the hips the arms stay straight at the start and whatever happens make sure your spine stays in neutral if we take a look at it from a profile view we can see that the torso travels from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock there's your 11 o'clock position neutral spine Pivot on the hips to 1 o'clock, okay? Remember, the power comes from the legs, arms are straight, transfer energy through that kinetic chain. Now let's talk about the finish phase. This is equally important. You want to finish strong, and this is where the handle approaches your upper abdomen. The key on the finish is really a strong retraction and depression of the scapula. Neutral spine, retraction, depression. you got to finish the stroke with a powerful end range motion. After the finish comes the recovery phase. Now the recovery phase, in my opinion, is kind of the secret sauce to rowing and it's something I continue to work on. The recovery is again the reverse of the drive, right? You're coming from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. It's not dissimilar to a seated cable row where the motion comes from the hips. Now one thing on the recovery is it should be slower than the drive phase, usually about a 2 to 1 ratio. So strong powerful drive, slow recovery. And finally, the catch phase. The catch phase is where you transition from the recovery to the drive. This is an important transition where your muscles go from an eccentric loading phase during the recovery to a concentric loading phase during the drive. This is where you want to be loose and relaxed on the recovery. And at the last possible second, you're going to lock everything up and transfer energy through the powerful drive phase. 
You should now know how to properly set up and use an indoor rower and be familiar with the four phases of the rowing stroke. However, if you want to know what goes wrong during each phase, stay tuned for the next video and article series on common faults in indoor rowing. Thanks again for joining and until next time, Pete Holman signing off for PT on the net. Hey there, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. And if you have any questions about proper setup or usage of the indoor rower or indoor rowing in general, please leave a comment and we'll do our absolute best to get back to you. And if you want any more information about PT on the net or Pete Holman, click on the links in the description. Subscribe to our channel. We upload a video every week.